This is the Chainsaw Minute, where Jordan and the I Chainsaw are Minute. going to be talking about the latest chapter of Chainsaw Man. Absolute Chad comic. Oh my yeah. god. Fujimoto, that motherfucker, he did it again. Are we actually going to make it where it's only a minute long? Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I feel like the, war- the, the introduction part doesn't count. Uh, okay, we got a minute to talk about it. Do you actually it, want to do that? Where we see, Can we describe, talk about each chapter in one minute? No. <laughs> First of all, that's 53 minutes of a podcast. Oh, you what? mean the, just the chapter? We could just do it where literally every week we do a one minute long podcast on every chat. The newest chapter of Chainsaw. Oh, my God. That would be... <laughs> would be funny but totally unlistenable <laughs> yeah. have you seen have you seen those star wars minute podcasts one minute of star wars maybe we should just uh we'll record an entire podcast about the first page of this chapter i was gonna and- say we do a podcast on every page of chance <laughs> That would be funny, but I think we, I think that would piss us off more than the listeners eventually. God, if people want more substantial views on the latest Chainsaw Man, let us know. Otherwise, we'll probably just be keeping it kind of relaxed and more casual than anything structured, which, you know, can be a nice change of pace. Anyway, so Jordan, can you off the top of your head try and summarize what happened in this chapter? I feel like this is the kind of chapter where it'll be better if we both do that and then talk about it as they happen. This is a good enough, a well-structured enough series where we can do that. Yeah, this chapter, and Jordan, I'm going to put you on name duty because, you know, I can never remember anyone's fucking name. (laughs) This is set in a classroom, set in the Chainsaw Man universe. We actually don't see Denji this chapter, which is interesting. The main star of this chapter is Bucky, who is the devil powered by the fear of chicken. So Bucky is not a threat. It is essentially a headless chicken with a bow tie and makes egg puns like, I'm excited to meet you. (laughs) Bucky gets pretty drunk and says, shut the cluck up. (laughs) No, it doesn't. Bucky is just wholesome the whole time. But to contrast Bucky, we are introduced to the main character. Oh, well, hold on. Hold on, David. What's up? Because there is a very important thing that you have to say about Bucky, which is he was introduced in the first page. And in the second page, the teacher says, and don't worry, class, three months from now, we are all going to kill and eat Bucky. What the clock? Bucky says. (laughs) Bucky literally says, what the clock? Yeah. He's like, I don't want to die. Oh, and this chapter's name is Chapter 98, Bird and War. Ooh. You know, David, because the main character's name is, I'm looking for it right now. It's like uh, Aza, Aza Mitaka. And yeah. I was like, does that mean anything? Well, Mitaka is a place in Tokyo that means three hawks. Interesting. So, Bird and War. It's very interesting. What's What's mm. he trying to say here, David? Chickens are delicious. Yes, they are. And yeah, chicken is a bird. So yeah, I love Bucky. We all love Bucky. Aza. So Aza Mitaka is like just this very sad, lonely girl who no, who feels like nobody likes her and they treat her like shit. But David, she has a, uh, the class president has taken notice of her. Yeah, she kind of looks actually like Eerie from Goodbye Eerie. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. I mean, this is series kind of is a fusion of those two one shots, Goodbye Eerie and Look Back. Yeah. Both, you know, Look Back with the school element and Eerie with, the, I feel like, the character interactions. You know what? I kind of felt that way, too. I will also say the moment where she's, uh, there's a moment where Mitaka is just kind of thinking about how fucking shitty and sad her life is. And she's eating ice cream or, or she's eating something while just standing in front of a really just incredibly drawn school building, which is yeah. just like, it looks looks like a an apartment out of fucking blade runner it's awesome <laughs> yeah i mean this whole thing like you can tell it, he's he had a lot of time making this chapter they're actually eating chainsaw curry man because chainsaw man has become so important and with so many fans that there is now chainsaw man merch in universe i wish i had these ch- this chainsaw man merch david i do too i really want to get a plush puchita yeah but you know, the school president, she's she's uh, she's very nice to her as Mitaka sits there and just well Mitaka is feeling like the joker at this point. She's talking about how we live in a society and the whole town is corrupt. She's actually giving Rorschach energy, you know? Yeah. Big Rorschach energy. Big Rorschach energy. Like she wants to look down at people and say no. <laughs> and she wants Chainsaw Man and Bucky to die. What the hell? Who wants Bucky to die? What a silly billy. What the fuck? 
That just doesn't fly with me. Yeah. By, by the way, at this point, I also have to point out Fujimoto is a god of tone. The way that he intentionally just switches this, because the thing about the class, the classroom is filled with a bunch of psychopaths. And that's intentional. Like, the way it's all presented is that it's obvious to us, the reader, that everyone's fucking insane. The teacher, Tanaka, fucking insane. There's just something about Tanaka that just, you know, it just it doesn't sit right with me. I just can't put my finger I, on it. I can't it. put my finger on I'm, I'm sure it's nothing. <laughs> I'm sure it's totally fine. Same with the class president i'm sure she's just a perfectly fine totally great person yeah no mitaka yeah fuck mitaka you know like she's she's unpopular for a reason i will say they make the decision that they are not going to eat clucky that was so fucking funny like straight up it was absolutely a parody of every scene in a manga where it's like what the class voted that they didn't want to kill and eat the school pet but it was so ridiculously laid out the teacher's like yes you get it the whole point was to just make you guys not want to do this or to teach you the value of life <laughs> we're gonna play soccer instead of having math class yeah every bucky's alive oh but, but i honestly thought this is like a dream of someone and like bucky turned out to actually be really powerful and this was like their dying dream the part of Chainsaw Man this series most reminds me of is the part where Denji goes full Chainsaw Devil and just start, and we see, oh my god, I'm forgetting her name. Hi, Hibin, Himino, Hibin, Kobani. Yeah. We see Kobani working at um, the burger joint, and yeah, the way that god. everybody there is acting, just like god. so overly chipper and just like creepily manic. The manager slaps Kobani for not being happy enough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is 100% the energy that, like, I'm getting from this chapter. Yeah, and so they all are having a great time. Um, Clucky actually was like, also, come be friends with everybody. And then <laughs> <laughs> she thinks about, oh, maybe life's not so bad. <laughs> and then, Judge, what happens, Jordan? Well, she was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to join in. Wow, all this time. I really just wanted friends. I can't believe it. I can be friends with them. And then she falls and crushes Bucky to death. underneath. underneath. Violently. <laughs> all his organs are falling out of his chest. Only Fujimoto could make that hilarious. Yeah. Only Fujimoto could make this absolutely laugh out loud. Hilarious. Fujimoto once used a decapitated head of a burger mascot as a joke. Yeah. Small spoilers, but her foot is not sticking out. And I went back to check. Yeah. And I was actually a little disappointed that you actually can't see it. She probably moved it back. I really think that was a detail I would have put in. So like on the reread, because obviously you would never notice that in the first time. However, I didn't notice that she was standing next to her on my first reread. So, I mean, like she is in that position. I just imagine she was quick enough to move her foot away. We'll talk. We eat. Listener, you don't even know what the fuck we're talking about. Because you've definitely listened to this having never read Chainsaw Man before. We're going to assume you've read this <laughs> chapter. <laughs> but yeah, she falls. She just fucking vomits, passes out. It's great. Yeah. Very realistic. Quite essential, like, 10th grader thought where if I think if they all voted to kill me, I'd vote for me too. The page of her after this where she's just, like, sitting, 10,000 yards stare, just, like, laying in bed, just, like, horrified, and it's like, damn, Fujimoto. Oh, I real clucked up. Really? You really clucked up. It was foul. <laughs> Bucky has a gravestone. Yeah. It's like a Flowers are left for him. Yeah. <laughs> poster of bucky next to her when she comes into the classroom there is. pinnacle of fujimoto efficiency in the chapter by the way where she comes she opens the door to classroom they look at her next panel is her crying in her bed yeah fujimoto is the most probably efficient mangaka of panels yeah it reminds me about the scene with look back where she's worried her friend got killed in the accident and you just see there's nothing that confirms it besides her getting a phone call from her mother yeah and that's it that's the entire scene as you know she died in that accident because you just see the panel of her mom calling her you're right like i'm remembering that scene now that was amazing and it was so subtle fujimoto is somehow despite everything extremely subtle it's amazing he manages to do that while also having blood and guts and just like he, yep. like explosions and just shit like that but anyway uh so at this point aza and some other people including the t including it's just her and the teacher well, it's her, the teacher and the class president oh yeah yeah sorry they are walking to see bucky's grave mm-hmm when Mitaka decides, I don't want to cross the street right now because the crossing signal's red and the teacher's like, oh yeah, you're right, we should do that. But the class president, David, class president, she gets really mad. She gets really mad. She made a deal with the eighth deadly sin devil, David. Fuck off, Jordan. <laughs>
It's such an interesting design, but I will say the teacher's face looking at her transform is maybe one of the worst drawn things in this chapter. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's just kind of. Yeah. But yeah, she turns into the justice devil, which is like a big, disgusting mass of like muscles and intestines. And she has six heads, one for each pea. Fuck off. <laughs> anyway, so she she kills Asa, who dies. Straight up dies. Yeah, she just very violently dies in a way, too. You see her eye fall out, her brains, yeah. as her head gets cut in half. It was an Iraqi death. Yep. And then she sees an owl who is a demon who says, your body will be mine. And I personally think she is a fiend. She has not made a contract. David, David, let me ask you something. What? What does she say after the owl devil appears? And who? Yes. She says who? <laughs> Motherfucker. I wonder if that pun actually crossed over in Japanese, though. I hope so. But I do want to say the, the panels while she's getting killed is like one of the best moments in the whole chapter because it says like literally right before she died, she has this thought where she's like, oh, I guess I wasn't responsible because what we were talking about earlier, uh, the, we, didn't, we didn't mention in this episode, but the class president tripped Mitaka and that's why she killed Bucky. So that's what we were arguing about earlier. Yeah. So for reference, I looked back and there's really nothing like you could see that she tripped her in the panels. And that was I was honestly a little disappointed because I would have thought Fujimoto would have put that in. I mean, she's standing next to her and nobody else is next to her. You don't see like one of her feet slightly sticking out. Eh. I just think that would have been a nice detail where if you're like notice one of her feet isn't as was like a little further out than the other one. All right. Yeah. No, I'll give you that. Yeah. It's not deal breaker, but I think it would have added to it. If you look back. No, you were a little disappointed. Yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. Which shows the quality of Fujimoto, I was expecting him to have done that. So far, David's biggest criticism here is that there wasn't an additional little extra thing. Yes. If, if that's somebody's complaint about your work, you're doing well. You're doing pretty fucking good. Yes. But I really love when she gets her head sliced open. She just has this thought where she was like, oh, uh, I wasn't responsible for Bucky. And the class president seems jealous of me because it turns out that the class president is having sex with the teacher. Yeah, it turns out he's a pedophile. <laughs> turns out he's a fucking pedophile. And she's she is jealous of Mitaka because the teacher likes Mitaka now. Mm hmm. Yeah, and she she decapitates him and turns his spine into a sword because she is now... It's so cool. The war devil or fiend, depending on interpretation of how the relationship works. Yes, she literally does a Mortal Kombat style fatality where she rips the creepy fucking teacher's head out and yeah, uses a spinal column as a sword. She actually calls it the Tanaka Spinal Cord Sword. It is amazing. I love how there's a detail where uh, the class president, she has six heads and all of them have a look of fear and disgust. But Fujimoto has drawn the same expression six times, but they all look different. They're all slightly different. It's amazing. But yeah, so she has a sword and she just cuts the fuck out of him. She cuts the her hand off, turns it into a hand grenade, <laughs> and causes him to explode. <laughs> she she cut well she hold on because it's a little confusing. Mitaka cuts off uh, the class president's hand and then turns her hand into a hand grenade that is shaped like a hand giving a thumbs up. Yep. And then yeah, she cuts her in half, leans Tanaka's like sword face into her so that it's like they're kissing and it's like they do kiss. There's a smooch sound effect. They do kiss. There is a smooch. And then, yeah, she gets blown up. And then she and then <laughs> much like in Goodbye Airy, Mitaka simply walks away from an explosion. Yeah, he created all of Goodbye Airy just so he could practice drawing an explosion. I fully believe that. And now she's got a dope ass scar, by the way. Yeah. And now she says, just you wait, Chainsaw Man. <laughs> and she looks at a poster. I'm going to make you vomit nuclear weapons back up because Chainsaw Man, I guess, removed nuclear weapons. From existence with his powers. The back up part is very confusing to me. But it's also like, oh, she's the war devil. So she probably literally will make him vo vomit nuclear weapons. So, yeah. So we now are introduced to our second horseman, I believe. So there, there's yeah. a debate if Makuma was one of the horsemen. What would she be? There's different interpretations of what the four horsemen are. Yes. So people think, I think it's like conquest can also be translated as control or something. Maybe I'm wrong, but there is like an argument that it is possible to translate one of the four horsemen names as what Makaba's name is. Uh, I'll hmm. leave it to someone who knows Japanese better than me, but that's the fuck because she does have the exact style of eyes. I mean, yeah, she is control, you know, like control and conquest. You know, that's uh, I can totally see. Yeah, that's interesting. Like, because on one hand, I feel like Fujimoto, if he's going to just call one of the horsemen war, he would yeah. do it for the other one. But it is there is a translation barrier. You're right. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. It's one of those things. I guess I'll just have to wait for the next few chapters. <laughs> yeah. So we'll find out. But Jordan, how many uh, Fujimoto's would you give this? <laughs> out of Fujimoto. You know what? How many... Um, how many uh, Domino's pizza pizza slices would you? Oh, that's true. Actually, yeah. If this chapter was a Domino's pizza, what toppings would you put on it? Or maybe it should be like how many out of eight slices? How many slices is it? <laughs> how many Pachita hugs would you give this? Oh, oh there we go. Because that was Pachita's dream. How tightly would you hug Pachita? Oh, so tightly. This was like this was literally. I don't think you could have had a better comeback chapter than this. Honestly, David? Yeah. I feel stupid because I doubted Fujimoto. I was like, how is he going to follow up? How is he going to continue this story? That was so amazing. There's no way he could just uh, pick up again and knock it out of the park. He fucking did. He fucking did, David. What he a fucking, fucking chatty it. moto. Fucking Chad. Fucking God. Incredible. And Jordan, I think that's everything, right? Eight slices of pizza, David. All right. Eight slices of pizza. Really tight. Tightest Pachita hug you legally can give. I'm so glad to see my friends back. They haven't even shown up. I'm so glad. I'm so glad to see my friend Fujimoto back. <laughs> I missed him. Anyway, yeah. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all. If you are a patron listening to this, you are a wonderful, fantastic human being. Please leave a comment in the Patreon or on the Discord of what you thought. Uh, definitely always love talking about Chainsaw Man. We are so excited to have it back. Uh, and we definitely want to make this something fun to find out how time intensive people would like this to be. If you guys just kind of like the free flow where we just kind of vaguely talked about the chapter. If you thought this sucked, we'll do it differently next time. It's also <laughs> the ch- next chapter will be shorter. So it'll, yeah. we'll f- we can actually talk more about what the chapter was instead of just going over it because this was 50, 53 pages. This was 53 pages of people we've never met before. Just like yes. complete setup. And well, yeah. not complete setup. There's a pretty damn good payoff, but you know what I mean. Yep. All right. But anything else, Jordan? I uh, chainsaw man rules. <laughs> I was going to say, keep on revving with chainsaw. <laughs> keep, keep on chainsaw, on... chainsaw man. Keep chain... on chatting, Fuji- Fujimoto. <laughs> Bye. Bye.